you've made this point, the term oligarchs a bit like it's um, become. I mean, I, I think it's broadly applicable to pretty much every country at this point. But right. Yeah, but it's it does have some because it's Russian. ethnic overtones when you talk yes. about oligarchs in this context. Yes. So I, I want to move away from the term, but colloquially or just for the sake of this conversation, oligarchs here in, in Russia that w- I mean, I saw an article in Bloomberg today, take it with a massive grain of salt, it's in Bloomberg, but that in a day, the billionaires in Russia lost over $30 billion um, because of these sanctions uh, when the invasion happened. I understand that he's the head of state and he can pretty much do what he wants, but I I, I don't, for, for business interests in Russia... And I know that they've kind of consolidated a bit of like their manufacturing. And so they, they under the sanctions may not affect them in the way that it might affect another country. Um, but they, they're, the billionaires are still going to be hurt by this. What, what's their role in all of this? So, I mean, it is interesting, I think, that um, among the events that took place uh, on Thursday, there was an event televised in Russia uh, where Putin uh, met with business leaders and explained to them that he'd been forced to take this action. He didn't really want to. And, you know, it was, it's all the Ukrainians' fault and, and he just had no choice. Uh, well, Ukrainians and NATO and the United States, I guess. Uh, I think it's interesting that, um, you know, as you say, he's not really accountable uh, at this point, but I think it's interesting that um, he, he felt the need to address that community specifically because you're right, they're the ones who are going to suffer the most from sanctions now um you know russia is a large country that is a major part of the global economy Um, they are uh, a huge energy provider uh, particularly to europe Um, putin has spent the last few years taking advantage of high oil prices for example to stockpile a a very large foreign currency war chest uh, in for just such an occasion in case that something happened and, and uh, you know, Russia found itself on the end of uh, really punitive sanctions. Uh, so I think they can ride this out for a while. Uh, the question is how long? And the, the other question is how long um, are the countries sanctioning Russia and, and particularly Europe with its need for gas and, uh, you know, countries, pretty, each, you know, member of the EU seems to have its own, specific economic connection to russia and you've seen seen um you know talk of uh, countries arguing like couldn't we carve out an exception for you know luxury cars or can't we carve out an exception for the diamond market like all you know playing to their own domestic constituencies and so the question is uh, how long can they survive this you know how long are those governments going to be willing to tolerate the economic hit that they will take um, and and it's it's almost kind of a, a a contest at this point of wills to see or if it goes on if this goes on the state of uh, sanctions goes on for for uh, an extended period of time it'll be sort of a, a contest to see who blinks first. 